As we start the scoring process, first, we need to decide where we are going to evaluate the cattle. Cattle must be evaluated where their feet can clearly be seen and where they can stand naturally. To accomplish this, cattle need to be on a hard surface, such as hard dirt, concrete, or maybe even a rubber mat. When cattle are standing on a softer surface, such as grass, mud, loose dirt, or snow, it can cover part of the feet and not allow for proper evaluation. Likewise, cattle should not be scored in a chute since it won't allow for them to stand naturally, and this is important to truly evaluate foot structure. Once cattle are on a hard surface, start by evaluating all four feet. Determine which foot is the combined worst for both foot angle and claw set. By evaluating the animal, from both the front for the claw set and the profile for foot angle. The combined worst foot for both traits is the one foot that will be scored. Next, decide which trait to score first between foot angle and claw set. Both traits are on a scale of one to nine with a score of five being ideal. Let's first start with foot angle. Evaluating foot angle is done from the profile view. This allows us to see how soft the pastern is evaluate depth of heel, and see how long the toes are. A score of one would be very short toes and very straight in the pastern. On the other side of the scale, a score of nine is extremely soft in the pastern with very little heel depth and long toes. A score of five is ideal with the appropriate pastern angle, heel depth, and toe length. Angus cattle can exhibit any score on the scale, but five to nine are the most common. Let's look at a few examples of foot angle. We should notice this animal is not extreme on either end of the scale. Spotting the angle of the pastern, it's not overly straight, nor extremely soft or weak. Then evaluating heel depth, then toe length, both being appropriate, we will score this animal a five for foot angle. Moving on to another example. Again, this animal is not extreme on either end of the scale. The angle of the pastern is good, not being overly straight, nor extremely soft or weak. Moving to heel depth and comparing to the previous example of a five, we do see a little less heel and the toes are getting a little longer. So this animal scores a six for foot angle. Let's take a look at another example. First thing we notice here is that there's not a lot of angle in the pastern which starts us at the lower end of the scale. Then, when evaluating heel depth and toe length, this animal gets a score of two. As we look at these examples side by side, we can easily see the progression of the pasterns getting softer, the heel depth becoming shallower, and the toes getting longer. Now, looking at claw set, we evaluate claw set from the front of the foot. This allows us to see if the toes are straight and symmetrical, if they're divergent, or if they cross over one another. Let's start by looking at some key differences in the top half of the scale. A score of five is ideal with straight, symmetrical, and the appropriate space between the claws. Now moving up to a six, we notice that there's a slight tendency for a curl in the claws, but the claws are about the same size. Contrasting that with a seven, we may see more curl but the key difference is that one claw is larger or longer than the other. Now notice the gap at the end of the claw in a seven compared to an eight. The key difference between the two is that an eight is near crossing over one another. Then finally, a nine has a pronounced curl with the claws crossing. Let's look at a few examples of claw set. This animal is not extreme on either end of the scale. The claws are straight, they're not divergent, they have appropriate space between, and each claw is the same size and length. This is ideal and scores a five for claw set. Now moving on to another example. Again, this animal is not extreme on either end of the scale, so we'll start by looking in the middle of the range. There's a slight tendency for curl at the end of the toes, but we do see that the toes are the same length and the claws are nearly the same size. Because there's a slight curl, but still the same length and size, this example scores a six for claw set. Let's look at one more example. 
first thing we notice here is there's a claw curling in towards the other toe. This puts the score on the top half of the scale since it's not divergent nor straight. Evaluating the toes further, the claws do not cross over. And looking at another angle, we see that they aren't quite near crossing either. So we've narrowed down between a score of six or seven. Then as we compare each claw and notice the inside of the claw is larger than the outside, that pushes this animal up to a score of seven for claw size. As we pull these examples side by side, we can see the changing in the claw's curl and size between scores of five, six, and seven. We've looked at the two traits, foot angle and claw set, and the key differences between the scores to help us confidently score our animals. While scoring, it is recommended to have the foot scoring guide provided by the American Angus Association handy to be able to compare the feet to the sketches for each score. Before scoring cattle, there are a few guidelines that need to be followed. Feet must be scored prior to trimming because we want to score the feet as they are naturally. If feet have been trimmed, just simply do not score that animal. Animals need to be at least 320 days of age to be scored or in the yearling age window. Scoring an animal should occur annually, but score feet without consideration for age of the animal as we know feet change as an animal ages. As with any subjective trait, one person should score all animals in a group to keep consistency. When submitting AHIR data such as foot scores, that improves the accuracy of your genetic evaluation and ultimately is providing better selection tools for you and the commercial cattlemen. If you have additional questions, contact the Performance Programs Department at the American Angus Association. Thank you for your commitment to education and pursuit to push the Angus breed forward.